The vacation year is headed to Halloween on the high seas aboard Disney Cruise Line. And to prepare for the festivities, I'm crafting my very own Madame Leota costume. Crafting is an occasional hobby of mine and it rarely goes as planned. So let's run through a time lapse of my tablecloth cape and see if I can actually pull this off. We're starting out with basic supplies, cotton fabric, trim, eye hooks, sewing kit, and my notes. I took rough measurements for my neck, added a couple inches for hemming, and then did the same for the length of my cape. Warning, I am not a seamstress. I have almost zero sewing skills, so we are using a lot of glue for this. Then I measured the cloth just to make sure that I had enough to get started with the project. I decided to model it off of a circle skirt pattern I found after watching several YouTube tutorials. Here you will see me doing some calculations to find the radius. When was the last time that you actually used pi in a math formula? I started mapping out my pattern with my tape measurer and chalk. I know that there are proper tools for doing this, but we're going to go with what we've got. Then again, using my measuring tape, I started to map out the points to help me form the bottom of my cape. I really hoped that tracing this larger bowl would work on the large circle the same way it did on the smaller one, but no luck. So I doubled back and made extra reference points before eyeballing the pattern line. I straightened my fabric the best I could and weighed it down with what I had around me. Now came the moment of truth. Can I actually follow the pattern line I created and not totally ruin this costume? My heavy duty sharp scissors made the biggest difference. Almost home free and time for the neck. Snip, snip, snip. Now I'm not as nervous. I was kind of in disbelief because it actually worked. Time for a try on twirl and functionality check. And of course, a little bit of dancing because we are headed to a party. Although it fit by slipping it over my head, I decided to create an opening to make it easier to get on and off. I was totally puzzled how I was going to fold in a clean hem for circular portions. So I tested a few folds and finally decided to go bit by bit. Here I'm protecting my kitchen table by covering it with a towel as I get ready to iron out the fabric and create less margin for error. I continued to iron the fold for my hems and used pens to keep it in place as I worked around the collar. This wasn't a completely sewing free craft, but I don't own a sewing machine, nor do I trust my hand stitching enough to create these hems. So I busted out my E6000 glue. I was only able to pull this off using the glue because I had a darker fabric and the glued areas were hardly noticeable. Warning, it did get a little messy because it is heavy duty stuff. I use this for other things like adding patches to my bag and I haven't lost a patch yet. I was thankful that the opening hems were so much easier because of the straight line I created. I skipped out on polishing the bottom hem because I had plans for adding trim that would hide the edge. I was most nervous about this part. The trim was flexible, but I wasn't sure how well I would be able to follow the curve I created. 
After threading my needle and eyeballing the alignment, I quickly realized that I didn't purchase enough trim, but I got started anyway and I made a plan to return to the craft store that day. I lined up the trim and pinned it in place every couple of inches to make sure I was keeping equal length on the edge. Once half was pinned on, I started to hand stitch. And this may be some of the ugliest stitching I've ever done in my life, but it hid well and it did the job. The following day, I finished stitching on the trim and added the eye hooks. Although a little sketchy, I really am happy with how this came out. Join me back on YouTube for the final costume reveal during our Halloween on the High Seas cruise aboard the Disney Wish.